Yeah, so Juliana is a certified Scrum Master, safe agilist, and acrobat. Uh, so she uses all of that to share insights into the art and science of collaborative communication, team building, and problem solving. So without further ado, she's going to be talking about how to build a culture of gratitude on agile teams and why it's important. Thanks. Thanks for the intro, everybody. Um, yeah, my name is Juliana Burkhart. I'm an Agile coach at Wood Mackenzie Power and Renewables. Um, and as you said, today we're going to talk about building a culture of gratitude on our Agile team. So just throughout the course of the day, I've gotten to listen to many of you speak. And I think you all probably know that it's important to treat all of our team members politely and with respect. And that kind of treatment probably involves saying thank you once in a while. But I do have a question for you before we jump in. And if you're on the Whova app, you'll see that question in the poll. And a few people have actually responded already. But if you're not on that, you can go ahead and type in the Zoom box. I want to know what ways do you like for others to show their appreciation to you? Or in other words, how do you like to receive gratitude from others? So yeah, please go ahead, type some thoughts. Um, on the Whova poll, we had a few people who said that they're actually uncomfortable receiving gratitude. So the more subtle, the better. Some people like to receive a private note and some people like for others to show their appreciation out loud in front of the group so that everybody knows what a good job they did. So you'll start to see some more variation in answers. And I just want you to keep that in mind as we get into today's topic. So at the end of last year, I was really lucky to have a conversation with a friend of mine, Dr. C. Dell Morrison. She's a postdoctoral scholar at the Ohio State University School of Environment and Natural Resources, whose research focuses on intersections of social and emotional psychology, including emotions such as gratitude, trust, awe, and social connections gained from shared experiences. And I wanted to talk with her, first of all, because I was really curious about how something so intangible as gratitude could be studied and quantified, but also because I already had a hunch that gratitude was important because I'd seen for myself that when I engaged my teams and some of the exercises I'll share with you, they really opened up and were eager to share their thoughts about how we should treat one another at work. So what I learned from speaking to Dr. Dale is that gratitude is usually perceived as a politeness norm. So that means, for example, you might say thank you when somebody holds the door open for you, because if you don't, they'll think you're rude. You don't want them to think you're rude. However, her research and that of many others posits that gratitude has an impact that goes deeper than a social norm. And her doctoral research has helped draw causal conclusions about how we anticipate and receive gratitude. So everything I talked to you about today is based on that research and on the conversation I had with Dr. Dale. So according to Dr. Dale, as a social species, humans survive and thrive when we interact with one another and cooperate on various tasks. That's the reason why early humans evolved to form cohesive nomadic groups, and then we settled down into villages and eventually built cities and civilizations. And we've also evolved mechanisms to decide who to cooperate with in order to protect ourselves and our resources. And one of those mechanisms is trust, the belief that someone else has your best interests in mind, and that if you choose to share your resources with them, like your time or your knowledge, that they'll respond in kind. So how do we know that someone is trustworthy? One cue that we've evolved to look for in determining trustworthiness is the expression of gratitude. If somebody doesn't show gratitude, they haven't acknowledged that they've received a form of help and they might not be motivated to reciprocate. And there's a 2008 study that said gratitude may function to promote relationship formation and maintenance. So when we show gratitude, it helps create a bond between people that strengthens a sense of community, it helps build cohesive and motivated teams. So if you care about individuals and interactions and you want to build projects around motivated individuals, give them the environment support they need and trust them to get the job done, you might recognize these quotes from the Agile Manifesto. 
And if you want to create a team environment with psychological safety, where individuals feel safe taking risks, exploring new possibilities, and asking for help, then you might want to pay attention to the function that gratitude serves in creating that kind of environment on a psychological, social, emotional level. So we've evolved evolutionary mechanisms to help us recognize trustworthiness, and they've made us smart enough to know when a show of gratitude is truly authentic or if someone's just adhering to that politeness norm. Not all displays of gratitude will have the same effect on all individuals. And as we saw in that warm up activity, different people prefer different shows of gratitude. So the way that you think someone, as well as the timing, the setting, and the other people present to witness it, will all have an effect on how that gratitude is perceived. So if we really want someone to feel that we are thankful to them, we need to show them in a way that is meaningful to them. And we do that by engaging in empathy for the person who helped us. And empathy is the ability to understand and care about the feelings of another person by relating to their experience as an individual. And we practice empathy by taking the perspective of the person who helped. So before you just say thank you to somebody, first ask yourself, what exactly did they do to help and how did helping you impact them? What effect did their help have on you? If somebody's assistance saved you time or money or made your life easier, saying so further signifies to your helper that you value the connection between them and yourself. And that's what deepens that bond and that sense of community. And as I saw, not everybody likes to be thanked in the same way, but by using empathy for others, we can personalize the expression of gratitude to suit a way that will make that individual feel appreciated. And empathy is a skill, we can practice it if we're given the right environment. So I found the best way to build a culture of empathy is to make sure that all conversations at work strict, strictly to business talk of the work at hand. Always very important rule. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. It's actually really beneficial to create space for team members to share stories from their personal lives and for us to be active and engage listeners so that they feel comfortable sharing those stories. So talking about what you did over the holiday weekend with your family or the movie that you just watched with your partner, those are all points where others can relate to you and begin to build that empathy. I also encourage you to spend time getting to know new team members one-on-one, -on -one, including how they like to receive gratitude. And that can be done through simple personal conversations. Just make it a part of your onboarding efforts to sit down with people who are new. I also suggest carving out specific time and space for all of your team members to express gratitude so they know it's expected in this environment and they get a chance to practice it. And one way to do that that we're probably all familiar with is to build a gratitude section into a retro board. So in this example, I have a section called team shout outs, but you can add a similar section to any typical start, stop, keep style retro in any tool that you like. Really, whatever way you want to provide your team with a regular opportunity to reflect on how their teammates were helpful who went above and beyond and how it impacted the team and give everybody a chance to read the results. Another thing that I learned from Dr. Dale, she told me, when a person is new to a team, it can be hard to absorb the culture. It might take an individual several weeks of repeated interactions to get a good sense of the norm behaviors around them. And for people with anxiety disorders or those on the autism spectrum or who are otherwise, uh, otherwise uh, not neurotypical, then that time scale can be even longer. So she recommends shortening that time scale by making expectations explicit. And there's a few approaches that we want to take in order to achieve that. The first is for us as agile leaders to model the behavior that's expected on the team. None of us is perfect all of the time, but when we make it our top priority to engage in authentic interactions with others, it really shows. And that kind of behavior is infectious and helps set the tone on your team for how people treat each other. Another way we can make expectations explicit is to document team norms and ways of working. And these are documents that are best created through collaborative effort rather than laid down by a manager. But agile coaches and team leads can facilitate conversations where individuals are asked questions about their preferred methods of working on the team. 
And by documenting these guidelines, agreeing on them as a team, and consistently modeling that behavior, we can make the experience of acclimating to a new team much smoother for everybody. So if you think you wanna make a team norms document and you need help getting started, Norm Curse Retrospective Prime Directive is a great source to look to. It reads, regardless of what we discover, we understand and truly believe that everyone did the best job they could given what they knew at the time, their skills and abilities, the resources available and the situation at hand. So when we consistently come back to these ideas, we make gratitude a central part of our work culture. We build psychological safety through actions that show all individuals are trusted to get the work done, that it's safe to ask for help, and that help will be reciprocated to support the success of everyone on the team. So if you wanna know more, you can read the full article that I wrote about this. Uh, I will put the link to this in the chat. You can contact Dr. Dale if you're interested in reading the complete manuscript of her study. And the other sources that we cited for this work are listed here as well. I'll also put those in the chat. And that's it for me. Thanks everybody for coming to think about gratitude with me. I hope you'll connect with me on LinkedIn if you wanna talk more about this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Juliana. That was fantastic. <clears throat> We may have time for questions, comments. Yeah, um, yeah. We got about four four minutes. Yeah, I don't see Ruth, so but we can go ahead and ask. Let's pepper Juliana with a hundred questions. I am mm -hmm. on me. <laughs> I don't have a question as much as I'd like to say. Thank you so much for sharing that. There was a couple of things that you covered that I want to immediately take back to my work group um, that I think would be beneficial to um, help to establish some of that, that trust and empathy that you're talking about. So thank you very much for that. Thanks. Thanks, Jenny. Can you, can you tell me what, what were the things specifically that you think you want to take back? Sure. Um, I think that... Um, one of the things, I mean, we already do um, some gratitude shout outs. We don't do it in a very deliberate, consistent way. So one idea I had when you were talking about, because yeah, um, I think also um, a little bit of just the information of how that does build the, um, the trust and how you tied it back to Agile. I think that was really um, useful. Thanks. Thanks, Jenny. The um, the uh, the way I'm looking at a slide using em empathy to express specific gratitude. I think it's the specificity there that would be helpful. Yeah, yeah, it's really important to just think about who you're talking to. If somebody did something nice for you, then you don't want to thank them in a way that's going to make them uncomfortable. Like they might be a really shy person who doesn't like public recognition, and they might be much happier if you just sent them a quick message than if you made a big grand statement in a room full of people. So it really just helps to know who you're talking about. And like I said, how them helping you impacted them, all good things to think about. Yeah, Juliana, when you did your poll earlier and I threw in food is my answer, it's because I grew up in a cooking family. So it's just like, it's one of those effort goes into good cooking, right? And so that's the way I show gratitude for things, you know? And so that's the way I love to receive gratitude as well, because it's like, I understand effort went into that and there was a whole bunch of love that went into it at the same time. I love that. I think that that's would be a really thoughtful way that somebody could show their gratitude is by making a favorite meal or, or maybe by, by sharing their favorite meal, something that they make at home all the time. Just yeah, put a lot of heart into it. Thank you. I've got a little bit of question. Oh, is this being recorded? Currently, yes. Oh, I can't speak when things are recorded. I just... <laughs> hey, 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 Matt, Matt, just, just do this, okay? Right, right. <laughs> so so I, I, I belong to um, a, a category of people that don't take appreciation easy. 
I, I don't like any bit of praise um, for all sorts of reasons. I don't know why I should. Perhaps I should. I don't think. I don't think it's just me. How would you? It's not like I don't want it or like it. It's feedback, but it's hard feedback on me. What would be your approach to lighten me to want to accept that um, feedback? If you're that way, yeah, I'm kind of the same way where. I crave praise, but when I actually receive it, I, I feel like, oh, stop. Yeah. And I, I noticed in um, when I first started working for the company that I work for now in my very first review, they had so much kind praise for me. And I, I just couldn't help but interrupt them and start talking over them. And I realized later they were trying to say all of this nice stuff to me and I just didn't listen. Basically, I, I interrupted them and stopped them. So I have tried to reframe it for myself as an active listening exercise. So if somebody is giving me praise, they are sharing their feelings about me. And I, I think giving any feedback can be hard to do, even if it's positive feedback. So I've been trying to just sit quietly and listen and wait until they are completely finished and then just say, thank you. And one exercise that I did uh, with a group of women in acrobatics who meet semi-regularly, uh, we did an exercise where every person had to receive a compliment from everyone else in the group. So I sat there and six other women gave me these compliments. And the only thing that you were allowed to say in response is, Thank, thank you. you. It's true. <laughs> oh, <God>. so, <laughs> you had to acknowledge them by saying thank you and acknowledge yourself by saying it's true instead of like, oh, no, no, like you're exaggerating. Don't that's too nice. Don't say that. You just said thank you. Yes, I am. I am that awesome. So those are just a couple of things that have kind of helped me. I still feel a little cringy about it, but I think it's getting better. <laughs> A just, question, take, right? just take the compliments. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. A, a follow-up one, right? What do you do with the counter one where you kind of know this is not going to be good? <laughs> you, you kind of feel it. Uh, which which do you prefer? Do you do you are you uh, is it is it free, are you free to take the sort of slight criticism and sort all kind of like room for improvement one better than where you think oh i'm a superstar now I'm, I'm a hero am i personally no no yeah which like do you do you do the counter as well do you feel oh. or, or do you get a little bit oh in my retrospectives no so we talked about when you've done well and you get the praise but there's also the counter where you kind of know you, you're going to get so slightly bollocks now mm. you know, like for self-improvement are you able to take that sort of like um, other side of the coin as well. I, I, mm. I, easier, but I don't know. I think it, I really like when when um, negative feedback is delivered with the sandwich technique. Say something oh, nice, and then and then like, well, maybe you could improve in this way, and then like finish with another piece of positive feedback that was that was a technique that I learned when I worked in childcare, and um parents of naughty children would come to pick their kids up at the end of the day and I just had to say like Christian had a, a wonderful day playing with his friends he did bite someone today but then he apologized <laughs> <laughs> uh, delivering the news like that goes down a little smoother for everybody <laughs> it sure does <laughs> mm-hmm.